Hi, this is Squad, and in this video, I want to tell you about bone cell signaling. And there are three main cell types in the maintenance of bone cells. Osteoblast, that makes bone cells called osteocyte, and you have much bigger cell called osteoclast that eat osteocyte. And uh, osteoclast is very similar to macrophage because both of these cells can eat other cells. And also both of these cells have multiple nucleases. And this is because both of these cells are made by fusing many monocytes. And monocytes come from common myeloid progenitors, which come from hematopoietic stem cells. All of this takes place in the marrow, but monocytes can now get out of the marrow, go to different tissue, and become tissue resident eating cells. Osteoblasts are not made from uh, metabolic stem cells, but rather mesenchymal stem cells. And let's talk about the signaling. Um, people knew that if you add a bone from a person to another person, the recipient is going to grow new bones around this transplanted bone. And this is because a special signaling molecule from this new bone is going to signal the surrounding cells to make bones. And people have tried to figure out what these things were. In 1960s, they did a lot of experiments, including isolation of proteins to figure out what is it that's making this bone formation. And in the 1980s, they figured out that there's a family of proteins called BMPs, bone morphology proteins, that induce the recipient's cells around this donor bone to make new bone cells. And the BMPs are similar to WINT in a sense that both of them are insoluble and both of these are region specifically secreted. And both of their receptors, however, are on many different cell types. And this is why when you add this bone from a donor to a recipient, the cells around this bone makes bone because they have the receptors. And the BMPs use a similar signaling sequence as the TGF beta signaling. So BMP in the region is not gonna go too far, but binds to a BMP receptor of the neighboring cells, and BMP receptor is going to eventually activate a protein called SMAT, and this protein is a transcription factor, so it goes into the nucleus and changes the gene expression of this cell. WINT is also needed, and WINT works on its receptors. First one is LRP5, lipoprotein receptor related protein 5, and another receptor is this G protein, a couple of receptor called Frizzled. When WINT, again, doesn't go too far, so its local signal binds to LRP5, the membranes are going to transduce the signal internally and release another transcription factor called beta catenin from its suppression complex made with APC, GSK3, and axin. And released beta catenin can also go to the nucleus and change the gene expression of osteoblast. So in summary, BMPs are local signals. WINT is also local signal. BMP binds to BMP receptor, use TGF beta signaling to release SMAT from its repression complex, and SMAT is going to change the gene expression. Together with the BMPs, WINT is also going to be local signal that activates LRP5 frizzled, resulting in freeing of beta catenin, and the beta catenin is going to help change the gene expression of osteoblast. As a result of this change, osteoblast will make more osteocyte progenitors, and these progenitors become osteocytes. And each osteocyte releases a few important ligands. The first one is SOST, which is called sclerostin. And another molecule that's secreted by osteocyte is rank L. Sclerostin is a local signal that's going to work on LRP and inhibit LRP signal. So this is a negative feedback that tells the osteoblast to slow down. And rank L is going to work on osteoclast. Osteoclast has a membrane receptor called RANK. RANK stands for receptor activation for nuclear factor kappa B. As the name suggests, this uses the TNF NF kappa B signaling and eventually releasing the transcription factor NF kappa B from its repression complex IKB. And this happens by activating another molecule IKK. So RANK L binds to RANK receptor 
Rank Recept activates IKK, IKK gets rid of IKB, and NF kappa B is now free to access these nucleases to change the gene expression of osteoclast. And as a result of this change, the osteoclast will increase its eating activity to recycle some of the bone cells. So in summary, local signals drive the bone making process. As more bone cells, osteocytes are made, there will be a negative feedback signal from SOST that inhibits LRP to slow down the bone making process. Also, the osteocytes make rank ligand that's going to increase the bone eating process of uh, osteoclast. So now all these cells are talking to each other through the osteocytes being made. And there's another signaling that works directly between osteoblast and osteoclast. And this happens when this region is fully committed to make bone cells. For example, during development, the embryo needs to make bones. And also when there's an injury, bone has to repair itself. So the bone making process is fully turned on. By the way, the BMP gene during this process of uh, development and injury has to be turned on a lot. And this is happens because the BMPs have multiple controlling sequences. The first is developmental controlling sequence and the second one is injury controlling sequence. So the same BMP signaling is used during the development and during a injury repair. And this is an example of parsimony in evolutionary biology. Anyways, so during this important bone making uh, stages, we don't need to eat cells, we just have to make them. So during this time, osteoblasts make this uh, protein and release it, and it's called the OPG. OPG stands for osteoproteogrine. And OPG is very similar to RANK in terms of their ability to bind to rank L. The difference is that rank stays on the osteoclast and activates osteoclast, but OPG is just floating around and its purpose is to compete for this rank L. Why? Because now rank L is going to be depleted. There will be less osteoclast activation because of OPG's uh, stealing of rank L and there will be less bone eating. So when the injury or developmental process is at its full, osteoblasts can turn off osteoclast directly. And just like BMP gene has uh, controlling sequences, OPG has controlling sequences as well. And one of the controlling sequences for OPG is controlled by estrogen. When there is high estrogen, more OPG will be made and more rank L will be sucked by these OPGs and there will be less osteoclast activation, less bone eating. So estrogen results in maintenance of the bone cells. But when a person goes through ovarectomy or uh, menopause, the estrogen level decrease. So the OPG level decreases as well. As a result, there will be less stealing of rank L and more activation of osteoclast more bone eating and uh, less bone cells. This could result in osteoporosis. Um, but there's a few way of countering the weakening of bone. The first one is using this molecule called bisphosphate. Bisphosphate can get to where bones are. And this is because osteocytes make a lot of uh, collagen and the chemical called hydroxyapatite secrete these molecules around it. So think of uh, osteoclast as the backbone of a bone and they secrete these collagen and hydroxyapatite to uh, make this structure really strong, resulting in a strong bone. And the bisphosphonate can get to this region and act on osteoclast. Bisphosphonate can actually get rid of osteoclast to drive down the amount of bone eating. And another molecule that's used for countering weakening of bone is called uh, denosuzumab. Denosuzumab can work directly on SOST. This is a monoclonal antibody, so it binds with SOST. There will be less SOST and there will be less inhibition of LRP5, resulting in maintenance of bone making. And the last treatment option is romosuzumab. It's also a monoclonal antibody and it binds to 
rank L. So there will be less rank L available, less osteoclast stimulation, and less bone eating. And romosuzumab logic for bone maintenance is similar to OPG. They both uh, eliminate the available rank L and overall decreasing the bone eating process. There is a rare Mendelian disease called the familial ossificans progressiva. And the people with this disease have one nucleotide difference between average human, and this specific nucleotide difference happens on the BMP receptor. BMP is secreted at specific places and BMP receptors are ubiquitous. And if you have a problem with this BMP receptor in your genome, then all of your BMP receptors are messed up. And this DNA change leads to BMP receptor being active even without BMPs. So people with this disease have overproduction of bones in various places in their body. And finally, exercise is good for the maintenance of bone because as you put stress to your bone, there will be less SOST. And less SOST leads to less LRP inhibition and more bone making, resulting in similar result as that of getting denosuzumab, right? So exercise leads to continuous making of bone cells.